Hi, and welcome to Reset Revolution. And today we will be talking about access to mental health support in American schools. And joining me is Megan. So, hi. Could you introduce hi. yourself? My name is Megan McGoon, and I'm currently in t attending public school in the United States. I am a part of an organization called Sources of Strength, which is a wellness program that is focused on suicide prevention. We focus on promoting the strengths that help kids feel better about themselves. Um, and these include mental health, family support, positive friends, mentors, healthy activities, generosity, spirituality, and physical health. Great. That's great. Um, so I guess the first thing we could talk about is what are some of the ways that you think U.S. schools lack mental health outlets? Um, I think we see that mental health illnesses among teens are becoming more and more prominent each year. However, the mental health treatment gap among schools is only getting bigger. We see that public schools in poorer communities just don't have the same access to the resources that schools in more privileged communities do, which is very concerning considering that typically um, communities of lower socioeconomic status do see a higher rate of substance abuse in teens. Mm -hmm. And so then we're also seeing a higher rate of teen suicide and mental health illnesses because we do see a lot of the times that mental health illnesses is very, um, very much linked to substance abuse. And kids with mental health, health illnesses are just more likely to get into substance abuse, become, um, get addicted to drugs and alcohol. And that's just more concerning because in poor communities, they're just not getting the same access, and it's just not really fair because we see so much of a higher rate of teen suicide. Mm -hmm. And um, also, one thing that is adding to the mental health cri crisis is COVID-19. We definitely saw a big rise in especially depression because kids are stuck in their houses all day. And as I mentioned before, one of the strengths that we focus on is healthy activities. And kids just did not have access to that for a very long time. And it still is hard in the U.S. because, I mean, we're working on it. More people are getting vaccinated, but... It's still not back to normal. I mean, I'm still in virtual school. So kids just are not having the access to healthy activities. And that has had a very big impact on their mental health. Mm -hmm. So I do. I live in Virginia, which is one of the best schools for mental health education. So I'm very lucky to have that. I think it's um, Virginia and New York were two of the first states to start requiring mental health education in schools. But in other states, I, I mean, I think schools now are much better about it, but still in less privileged communities, they still do not have good mental health education or resources. I have noticed that one of the best resources that is available in my school is our school social worker. Um, I know him. He is part of Sources of Strength, and he's just, he's one of the nicest people I've ever met, honestly. You can tell he genuinely just, he cares so much about all of the students, and a lot of schools just don't have the funds to hire a social worker and other resources in general, and it's, it is um, becoming a big crisis because just so many schools are not having these resources. Yeah, I completely agree, agree with what you said about um, in poor communities and definitely uh, that kind of issue because you're right, it does affect, unevenly affect people in low-income communities and it's a cycle and it, if it's not broken, then it just continues and yeah. So yeah. you're talking about Sources of Strength, which is this awareness mm -hmm. campaign that you're involved in. So could you talk about some of the campaigns that you've done and how they've affected the people at your school? Yeah, so our program, it is very new. My school is, this is our second year being open. 
So our program is also very new. So the Sources of Strength organization, it is nationwide. So at this point, most schools do have a Sources of Strength club available. And um, so because we are new, we really wanted to focus on spreading awareness about what the organization is and what our strengths are, what our key focuses are. And um, so we started in December of 2019 of last school year. And due to COVID, we did have to come to a hold in March 2020. So we kind of had just started to develop ourselves as an organization and had just started campaigning and um, bringing in awareness to the club when we were cut off. So we had to adapt to being online. So this year we've been focusing on bringing awareness to the different strengths to students virtually. And the way that we've been doing that is through social media because we noticed that is where most teens spend their time online. So um, our Instagram has become a big way of campaigning and spreading awareness. So we just show off um, the different strengths of sources of strength and how they can practice these strengths to just live better. And we um, tell them about what the strengths are, how they can do this, how they can be a better community member by showing these strengths. And we're also working on a generosity campaign, which is one of the strengths. And we wanted to give every student in the school a platform to tell their own stories, to show their generosity, and just to encourage being a healthy community where we all just have some positive acts of kindness. That's great. That sounds great. Yeah, I think the social media thing is great. I mean, I've seen it, and I think it's really great. So, yeah. Um, So, the last thing I thought we could talk about is what are some ways that you think... Oh, okay, sorry. What are some of your hopes for the future and how you think that schools can move towards being more supportive of mental health for students? Um, I do think that schools need more government funding for mental health programs because that is the way to encourage schools to really have some developed quality mental health resources for all students Mm -hmm. because we do see that I mean therapy is such a good solution and resource for a lot of people however it is so expensive because it is for profit so I do think that government funding in schools just to give that resource to everyone in public schools is so important especially in communities of lower socioeconomic status because they don't have those resources parents of students in poor communities they can't afford to send their kids to all these healthy activities and they can't afford therapy so it is essential to have good resources in these schools and I also think that schools need to start talking to kids when they're younger like in middle school even elementary school um, about just ways to cope with stress and anxiety and educate them and give them coping mechanisms before they develop into harmful mental health illnesses and um, also as I was saying substance abuse support is um, just essential to solving the mental health crisis because it often just leads to so many different mental health illnesses that come along with addiction and um I do hope that we see a increase in mental wellness as the pandemic hopefully starts to come to an end and people's lives can go back to normal and they can see their friends and go back to their positive relationships and healthy activities and we can just gather as a community and support each other again. And um, I do think, so we are a generation that spends a lot of time online and we have done a really good job in normalizing and talking about mental health issues. And I mean, I think that therapy is something that we have normalized talking about, which I think is amazing. But um, we need to also make 
social media a place that we can not only talk about it and joke about it, but support each other, say, oh, I've got you. Talk to me whenever you need. Like, I am support you. I'm somebody who um, you can have a positive relationship with. Because I do think that even though um, social media is a great place to spread awareness and where we just talk about mental health illnesses a lot, a lot of the times it's kind of seen as a joke. You know, you'll be kids who are like, oh, I'm so depressed. And it just kind of becomes a joke on social media sometimes. And I think that we need to focus more on support. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on and I completely media. agree with, with what you said about education because I think that first of all, <clears throat> sorry, first of all, if we if schools start educating kids younger, like middle school, elementary school, it can help them develop, yeah, coping strategies and just like be able to spot the signs of mental illness earlier before they start going going down that lane and also I think that having education about mental health is so important because yeah I definitely see people joking about it and like I think it's just because it's so normalized in our society but I think that once people really learn about different types of mental illnesses and how to cope with it then that just yeah I think we need it needs to start younger and there needs to be more support in schools and I think education is the first step so yeah yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, that's really great. And it was really great to hear your perspective as someone who's really involved in your community with that. And I think what you're doing is great. So yeah, thank you. Well, yeah, so thank you for participating. And it was just really great to talk to you. So thank you. Yes, you too.